Sherman moves in. Stu 42 looks like it will be out in a shot. No. Survives one. Grenades being dropped on the Grenadiers. My goodness, that was terrible. Veterans, you one up for the Sherman and the Grenadiers are lost. Rifleman perhaps looking to get into this building or will the Fox Grenadiers beat them to it? No, neither shall enter. And we are seeing a bit of harassment here. Reconnaissance section under actual fire, but forcing the pioneers back, leaving behind only this Puma. Stuart 4 not supporting the main efforts right here, down, which is a bit unfortunate. Not entirely sure why these false gunners have not been placed inside the building. Coming under quite a bit of fire. Looks like the medic bunker is now lost. Large German infantry force hanging about there and retreating. Not entirely sure what he's saving resources to get for again. And Nettleworth could certainly have been of help. Instead of just throwing out Pumas and Stooks without infantry support. And now we are seeing a pre-self-propelled artillery. Lots of self-propelled artillery. In fact, the second Calliope hitting the field as well. So quite an interesting combination. And this small force is pulling back. The pack nearby as well. Not entirely sure why though. And a last look at Brobolord who does seem to be sailing together for the Tiger. But shall it be enough? And back to Garav. Calliope opening up. Why did he park those there? And looks like the Puma survived the barrage, but does not survive the Brens. Stuke 4 behind, and a pack as well. Not a happy situation. Grenadiers charging in with barely any support. Calliope he's being sent in to cover this area. Catching quite a few Stormtroopers and Grenadiers in it. And now the 25-pounder Priest opens up as well. Clearing out an entire Grenadier team in seconds, my goodness. Rover Lord has indeed failed the fatherland, I fear. And so has Frisky Piranha. And a Tiger finally hits the field, finally being able to muster some heavy armor to support the situation. But I fear it is too little too late. And the Stug 4 opening up. Tiger as well. Moving straight into the middle of things. But shall it be able to do anything since it seems to be ignoring the actual opponents though. There we go. Nice shot on the priest. Clive is might also take a bit of damage, but now getting sticky bombed. Oh dear. Damaged engine. Sherman moving in from the rear. This looks like to have been a suicide order for the Tiger, my goodness. That is certainly a crime. You could certainly risk Mr. Brobo Lord getting sent to the Eastern Front in a rather cold and wet trench filled with dead Russians. And now absolutely getting torn apart by a near barrage Calliope. That was just disgraceful. So not looking good for the forces of the Wehrmacht. On the other hand, the 51st Lowland Division and of course the 1st Infantry Division has scored a great victory for Uncle Sam here. Really having blown apart the rear guard blocking force established by the Germans. Torn apart a lot of Grenadiers. Tiger and Stukes. Heavy losses. Having suffered minimal losses themselves, in fact, and my goodness, a captain with veterancy 3? And a panzer trick, that's certainly an elite captain. Forward supply line from broken. And now just dropping some artillery, and there we go. But Overlord retreating. Trying to get out of there before anyone catches him. And sends him off to the eastern front, but I doubt he shall get very far before the Fed Colisai catches him. And Frisky Piranha also 
eloping, hoping to evade a grim fate. So, what can we learn from this? Well, of course, this was a rather interesting map. I mean, we saw some good efforts from the Americans and British, good uses of infantry, good usage of pressure, and good position for the British command truck with a mortar emplacement. For the Germans, though, they did pretty terribly, in fact. I mean, sort of heavy support, lack of infantry on both sides. I mean, losing MG42s like that, of course, sending them ahead without support. That's really the last thing you want to do, and of course that cost them dearly. And again, then sort of continue to just throw out lots of Pumas, not getting a Nebelwerfer, not getting really a lot of Stooks, or even again infantry, for, for example, Frisky Piranha. That was an absolute terrible move, which again just cost them a lot of resources without effectuating much damage for it. Brobolor was able to do something a bit more, but then he sort of just relied on Stu 42 and instead of getting perhaps some armor again, had either perhaps gone for that Panzer Command, getting perhaps a Panther or a Panther 4, things might have looked different, but sadly they seemed absolutely stuck in this sort of modes, and they got absolutely punished for it by Garav and Grimstot here. So, there you go, I hope you enjoyed this fight, if you did, why not subscribe or tell your friends, and if you didn't, well, why not send in a replay of your own this is Imperial Dane saying don't do as Brobo Lord or Fresky Piranha. Cheers!